So you've been writing your own custom code and up until now you haven't figured out a way to deploy it. And you understand it's important to have a CI pipeline to continuously test and integrate your code. And you also understand that CD or the delivery side of that is important as well. You'd like to continuously iterate and deploy the features that you're working on. And you would love to self-host this within your home lab. Well get ready because we're gonna turn your home lab into a DevOps stack. Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're gonna to talk about turning your home lab into a DevOps stack. As a quick reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you wanna continue the conversation about DevOps there, we can. So let's talk about turning your home lab into a DevOps stack. In my previous videos, I showed you how to set up Kubernetes using Rancher. That helped you get Kubernetes in your home lab and it also helped you start containerizing your workloads. Then after that, I showed you how to self-host those containers securely how to put them behind a reverse proxy, how to get a valid certificate using Let's Encrypt, and how to publish that workload to the public. This allowed anyone in the world to access your services. Then after that, I showed you how to host your Rancher UI securely so that you can access it on the go. And it also gave you third-party authentication providers. But what we also did in that video was expose our Kubernetes API. So you might be thinking, why would I wanna expose my Kubernetes API? We exposed our Kubernetes API so that we can take care of this final step in our DevOps stack. And that's building and releasing our custom code to our own self-hosted infrastructure. And we're gonna do this all automatically with our own CI and CD pipeline. I kind, I kind of feel like Mr. Miyagi after this. Like I showed you how to sand the floor and wax on, wax off and paint the fence. <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> anyway, so today, in this video, we're gonna set up a CI and CD pipeline within your own infrastructure. We'll start with our own repo. We'll create a self-hosted GitLab runner within our infrastructure. We'll build and test our own custom code. We'll create a Docker container and push that to a registry. Then we'll push that code and that Docker image to our own infrastructure. Then after that, you can build and release your code within a couple of minutes. So with that out of the way, let's get started. First, you want to create a repo within GitLab. Now, this can be a self-hosted version of GitLab or the public version on GitLab.com. But either way, you'll need a repo that we can use to build our custom code. If you want to use mine as an example, I'll have links in the description below. The first thing we'll need to do is create a GitLab CI YAML. This file runs our CI pipelines. Here, I created my first pipeline, and this is the build stage. Now, this is a React application, but this can be anything you want it to be. But in this pipeline, I define a few things. First, the stage is called build, and I've named this prod build. Here, I'm gonna use the image node 1216.2. This can be any version of node you want, but I've pinned mine to 1216.2. Next, I'm gonna do a few things for this build. I'm gonna set the node EMV to production. Then I'm gonna install my dependencies using yarn. Then I'm gonna run my JavaScript unit tests. Then I'm going to create a production build. And then I'm gonna upload some artifacts. So if we commit this code now, we'll actually run our build pipeline. And this will run these four steps. And this pipeline will run on GitLab.com. And those runners will run on GitLab.com. And GitLab gives you a lot of free minutes for your CI. But we want to run this GitLab runner within our own infrastructure. So back in our Rancher cluster, let's create a workload for these runners. So we'll go to Global, Cluster, Default Cluster. And here we'll want to click Deploy. Let's name this GitLab runner. And we're going to use the Docker image GitLab slash GitLab runner. We can keep the namespace as default. We'll need to add one volume for this. So let's click Add Volume. And here we'll need to map a volume for our config. Here I'm gonna mount the Etsy GitLab runner from the Docker container to a path on this local node. And this can be anywhere as long as it has right access to it. Next, we'll need to mount another volume. This is mapping Docker from the container to Docker on the host. Then we'll click launch. Okay, so now that this workload is running, let's go into it. Now we'll need to actually configure this GitLab runner to pick up jobs from our GitLab instance. So let's exec into this container. We'll choose exec shell. And now we'll need to enter a command. It's gitlab-ci-multi-runner space register. And we'll execute that. So now we'll need to answer a few questions. First, we'll enter the URL of our GitLab instance. Next, we'll need to add a token for this. Now you can find the token under settings CICD. I'm doing this at the group level so that all of my projects underneath it can take advantage of this runner. But if you wanna do it per project, you can. So right here's our token. Next, we'll need to add a description for our runner. And this can really be anything you want. Next, we can enter tags that will be scoped to this runner. Now, these aren't Git tags. These are GitLab tags for CI. And I want it to build anything it sees. So I'm going to hit enter. Next, we'll need to choose the executor. I typically choose Docker here. 
Next, we'll need to enter the Docker image that this runner will use. And I'm just gonna use the latest Docker stable. And it looks like it's registered. Let's check GitLab. And if we go back to our runners, we should see it here. And then if you go into Project Settings CICD, you should see your runner here. Make sure that Group Runners is turned on. And then also confirm that Shared Runners is turned on. Now, if we go into that runner's logs, we should see that it's configured. And if we look at our config folder on that node, we should see a config.toml. Now, we won't need to change anything in here. So now we have a GitLab runner running within our own infrastructure. And so if we commit this code, the runner's gonna pick it up and run this step. And this step includes unit tests so we can verify our code. Now that we're able to test our code, we wanna take the output of this build and put it inside of a Docker container. So first I'll create a Docker file. In this Docker file, I'm going to use Nginx. Here I'm gonna take the output of the build directory from our build and put it inside of the www folder within Nginx and replace the default one that Nginx ships with. And next I'm gonna set our entry point. And here's the Nginx config that we're gonna use inside of this image. This is pretty straightforward, but it's just an easy way to host our React application. And you can see in the Docker file, we're actually gonna copy this file inside of it during build time, which means now we need to actually create this build step. So I had a stage called Docker. I'm gonna create a variable so that we can use it later. This is a variable pointing to our Docker registry. We get these for free from GitLab. Then I'm gonna create our Docker pipeline. I've set this to run on only tags. So this pipeline's only gonna run when I push up a Git tag. The image that I'm going to use isn't the typical Docker and Docker one that GitLab uses. That's because it requires you to elevate your privileges or run this in privileged mode. So I'm gonna use a Docker image from Google. They created Canico specifically for this reason. It's so you can run Docker within Docker in the least privileged mode. Now, I know that might be kind of confusing, but we're actually gonna run Docker in this step. So we're inside of a Docker container, we're gonna build our Docker image, and then we're gonna push that up to GitLab's registry. So here's the scripts you need to do that. And a lot of these variables that you see here come with GitLab CI. Okay, so now would be a good time to actually push this code up and test our CI pipeline. There's one more thing we wanna do first. And this isn't required, but this is an easy way to release software. This is a release tool I use called Standard Version. It helps automatically create a change log based on your Git commits. And it will also tag your code when you run it. So if you'd like to use it, just add Standard Version to your dev dependencies. Then I create a release script called Release, and then we call Standard Version. And then typically after that, I use a Git hook called Post Release. And this Post Release will do a couple of things. First, it's gonna push up the actual commit from this release. I'm telling it to skip CI here so that it doesn't run CI just on the commit from the version increment. Then it's gonna push up my code based on my NPM package version, which it also increments in the previous step. Now we can run yarn release. Okay, so you can see in the change log, it incremented my package.json, it updated my change log, it created a git tag, and then it pushed it all up. Now, if you're not using standard version, this is as simple as just creating a commit, creating a tag, and pushing that tag up. Okay, so let's go check on our runner. So we can see our runner picked up a job. Let's check in GitLab. And we can see in GitLab, it ran the first step. So it tested my code and then created a production build. And then if we look at our Docker build step, we can see we actually built our Docker container. And if we go to package and registries and we go to container registry, we should see our new Docker image. So far, we built and tested our code on a GitLab runner that's hosted within our own infrastructure. Then we created a Docker image and pushed it up to our GitLab registry. Now we need to pull that image out and host it in our own infrastructure. So let's go back to Rancher. In Rancher now, we need to create a workload and we wanna use the private registry that we just pushed that Docker image up to. In order to pull that image down, we need to configure a private registry. So here's how you do it. Go into global, default cluster, then we'll go to resources secrets, and then we'll go to registry credentials. Here, we'll need to add our registry. And here, let's name this GitLab, and you can choose how you wanna scope this registry. I'm gonna make this available to all namespaces for me. And next, we'll wanna choose custom. Here, I'll put registry.gitlab.com. And for the username and password, we're gonna to need to generate a token from GitLab. On GitLab, you'll need to go into your user settings and then access tokens. Then you'll need to choose the scopes for this token. I've chosen read access to user, API, registry, and repository. Then you'll click create token. Then back at Rancher, you'll enter your username and the token you just created. Then we'll save. Okay, so now Rancher can actually pull from your registry. The reason we set this up is because I have a private registry, but if yours is public, you won't need credentials. 
So now let's set up that workload. We'll go back into cluster and then we'll deploy. You'll name your workload. Then you'll want to specify the registry that we just created. In my case, it's registry.gitlab.com slash the org name, which is techno-tim slash the project name, which is techno-react and then our tag. I'm just going to use latest. Then if you want to configure some host ports for it, you can. But if you plan on hosting this over SSL, there's some more steps you'll want to do and you should probably see my traffic video, but we'll launch this workload for now. Then after we save our workload, it should be able to pull it. Okay, so now we have our workload set up. Now we need one more step in our CI to actually do the CD part, and that's to replace our workload in Kubernetes automatically during CI. First, let's create a Kubernetes folder, and inside there, let's create a deployment YAML. In here is our Kubernetes deployment YAML. I've extracted the minimum that Rancher and kubectl will need to actually deploy this. You're free to copy this and replace it with your workload name. The interesting part in here is the actual deploy date value. I've created this custom annotation and this will help with deployments. This will help us redeploy this workload even if it hasn't changed. And really it's just an optimization that I use so I can redeploy stuff. Next, we'll create our deploy stage. And in our deploy stage, we'll do a couple of things. First, we're gonna use this kube control image. This is so we can actually apply that deployment YAML. We're only gonna do this on tags, so only on releases. And here's the optimization I was talking about. In this step, we're gonna search for that token deploy date value and replace it with the actual date. Here, we're going to create our kube config file. And here, we're gonna base64 decode our Kubernetes kube config file to the path within the container. And then last, we're gonna apply that file that we created created earlier. And so we need a variable to the path to our kubeconfig within this container. And we just created that right up here. Kubeconfig is at slash root dot kube slash config. Okay, so this is almost ready to go. The last thing we need to do is get our kubeconfig file into a GitLab secret so that we can pipe it out here. And so to get our kubeconfig file, we go to cluster and go to your cluster. And here you'll see kubeconfig file. So you want to download that file so we can do a few things. I'm gonna delete a few things. I'm gonna delete the certificate authority data, as well as the whole entire name key, as well as the second name key. I'm also gonna delete the context with the second name as well. You should end up with something that looks similar to this. Next, we'll wanna base64 encode this and copy it to our clipboard. If you're running Linux or Mac, you can use pbcopy. If you're running WSL on Windows, you can't run pbcopy without some additional configuration. And I'll link a blog post to that in the documentation. And remember, we want to cat out the kube config from the file we just edited and pipe it to base64 and then pipe it to our clipboard. So we'll run this. Okay, so now we have a base64 encoded version of our kube config file. And we need to create a GitLab secret so that we can echo that out during deployment time. So we'll go back to GitHub at the org level. Then we'll go into settings and we'll go into CICD. Here you'll see variables and we can expand that. Now, the reason why I'm doing this at the org level is so that any repo within this organization can use this secret. If you want to scope this to just a repo, you'll need to change it. So we'll click add variable here and you can name this variable whatever you'd like, but it needs to match what you have in your CI pipeline. And that's right here. I called it Kubernetes kubeconfig. And the value is going to be the base64 encoded version of your kubeconfig file that's on our clipboard. So paste it in there. And here you want to choose whether or not you want to protect and mask the variable. Now I can't go into detail as to why you would choose one of these. You'll have to make that decision for yourself, but you can click the help and learn more. And once we add that variable, we should see it here. Now we should probably commit our code and push it up. And now if we release our code or run a git tag and push that tag up, we'll exercise this part of the pipeline, which is our Kubernetes deployment. So let's run a release and we can see our deploy pipeline running and we can see our deployment running right now with our container getting upgraded from Kubernetes. So congratulations, you have a self-hosted CI and CD pipeline. You can now build and deploy your code to your own infrastructure. And this all happens within a couple of minutes, depending on your build times. And this is a really fast and incredible way to get your own custom code to your infrastructure. And if you really wanted, you could host your own GitLab instance. So what do you think about building your own DevOps stack? What do you think about hosting your own CI and CD pipeline? Did you run into any challenges along the way? If so, let me know in the comments section below. And while you're in the comments, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have more questions, you can always join my live stream. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, hop in my stream and I'd love to have you. So thanks so much for watching and till next time, stream on my friends. Real website running that I self-host here 
or a blog or something, something I can point to that, you know, may, may or may not relate to what I'm getting into. Um, but just to show that, Hey, you know, here's the type of things that I like, here's the types of things that I do. Here's the types of things that I can, I can do on my own and kind of show that, you know, you're a self-starter. Uh, so if they're getting into code, I highly recommend if they're going to be a software engineer, I mean, the tests are hard. I'm not going to lie. Uh, you know, depending on which company you're going to, they're going to be hard. Um, but at the same time, I think it's also nice to, if they're, if they're thinking about it or going to do it, it's just like start contributing to some open source project, write some kind of library, build something, build something that they can show to say like, Hey, here's the kind of things I work on outside of here. And here are the types of things that kind of set me apart because those are the types of things that, that people interviewing talk about in the hallway, like after the interview, 